Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. 888-589-8840 is the number. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, 888-589-8840. Just came across this story this morning. You're probably aware by now that the FBI has said they are not going to prosecute anybody for the IRS harassment of the Tea Party. Remember, I told you yesterday the ACLJ one of the really good guys in First Amendment litigation, they are they are representing 41 different Tea Party conservative organizations in suing the IRS for harassment and intimidation. This is was exposed eight months ago. Since that time, the FBI has talked to less than 10 of those 41 organizations. And today, they gave the whole thing a clean bill of health. It just stinks. It's just a whitewash. Meanwhile... Chuck Heath Jr., that is Sarah Palin's brother. So he's the son of Chuck Heath Sr., Sarah Palin's dad. And up until 2008, he'd been paying taxes for 50 years. Never a problem, never an audit, never a question. Since 2008, he has been, quote, horribly harassed by the IRS six different times. So the IRS under this president is no longer a neutral, uh, apolitical tax collecting agency. It's now an enforcement arm of the Obama administration. Now let's uh, play a couple of sound bites having to do with this Iran business. Here is President Obama, clip number one. I can't believe he uses a cliched term right out of the 60s. I actually expected him to put a flower in his hair in the middle of these remarks. Let's listen. If they fail to walk through uh, this door of opportunity, uh, then we are in a position to reverse uh, any interim agreement and uh, put in place uh, additional pressure uh, to make sure that Iran does not uh, obtain a nuclear weapon. Uh, my preference uh, is for peace and diplomacy, and this is one of the reasons why I've sent a message to Congress. Uh, that uh, now is not the time for us to impose new sanctions. Now is the time for us to allow the diplomats and technical experts to do their work. We will be able to monitor and verify whether or not the interim agreement uh, is being followed through on. And if it is not, uh, we'll be in a strong position to respond. Uh, but what we want to do is give diplomacy a chance uh, and give peace a chance. Uh, and uh, I am uh, confident that uh, I speak not just for myself, but uh, for our P5 plus one partners, uh, that uh, they think this is an opportunity that we should not miss. All right, got to give peace a chance. Flowers in your hair. Jeff played an excerpt from that John Lennon song, Give Peace a Chance, uh, in the intro. Now, we're getting information, 450 pages. This is clip number two, Rob. 450 pages now of testimony has been declassified about what happened the night of Benghazi. Two Fox News reports I want to bring you, very telling, very revealing. This is clip number two, talking about um, Commander uh, Ham, Carter Ham, who was head of AFRICOM and their reaction on the night of the attack in Benghazi, 9-11 in 2011. Let's listen. The commander went on to present a picture of a woefully ill-postured military force whose assets were not in position to launch a timely response or rescue, not just in Benghazi, but also across Africa and the Middle East. No attack aircraft were placed on high alert on September 11th. Fighter jets were unarmed and air refuelers were 10 hours away in Great Britain. They did what they could with what they had. The bottom line here is they didn't have what they needed to respond. U.S. AFRICOM commanders were aware of a deteriorating security situation in Libya and offered a detachment of Marines to the Libyan embassy following a visit to Libya in December 2011 by then Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. The offer was rejected by the State Department and there were no Marines in Libya on the night of the attack. So what this report is saying, look, the military was horribly positioned to do anything in Benghazi. You had no attack aircraft that were on high alert. This was 9-11. Remember, they had intelligence that this attack was coming, uh, that they had pleas from the embassy in Tripoli and the compound in Benghazi. We need more security. And they were turned down. The Marines were turned down by the State Department. That means Hillary Clinton 
left these guys hanging out there to dry and left them hanging out there in the end to die. Here's clip number three. Again, General Carter Ham, who was the commander of our forces in Africa. Let's listen. First-term GOP Congressman Brad Wenstrup of Ohio, a veteran of the Iraq War, pressed the issue. As a military person, I am concerned that someone in the military would be advising that this was a demonstration. I would hope, Wenstrup added, that our military leadership would be advising that this was a terrorist attack. Again, sir, Ham testified, I think, you know, there was some preliminary discussion about, you know, maybe there was a demonstration, but I think at the command, I personally, and I think the command, very quickly got to the point that this was not a demonstration, this was a terrorist attack. And you would have advised as such if asked. Would that be correct? Well, and with General Dempsey and Secretary Panetta, Ham said, that is the nature of the conversation we had. Yes, sir. So, again, we see that President Obama had been caught red-handed in a lie. Hillary Clinton caught in the lie. Susan Rice caught in the lie. They knew from Jump Street. They knew immediately this was a terrorist attack. This was the kind of the briefing uh, that they got, that this was not some kind of demonstration gone awry. This was a terrorist attack. Uh, Charles Cranover, clip four, explains the significance of all of this. I think the why is obvious. It was a way to maintain the fiction as an election was approaching, Obama boasting, uh, bin Laden dead, GM alive, that Al-Qaeda was on the run. They didn't want this, an obvious instance of a terrorist attack on the 9-11 anniversary to, to, uh, to refute that story. So... The questions remain, how did this start, since it obviously didn't start with the military. The military was telling the president on that very night. And the second question is, for these weeks afterward, when the pretense was out there, how could the people who knew, including, you know, very honorable people like the Secretary of Defense and others, stay quiet when they could see a falsehood being said? And when you think of the question that Hillary... Clinton asked, what difference does it make? You know, there's something Clintonian in the question. There's a difference between the truth and a lie. The difference is that people in high office with public trust ought not lie. And if it was a lie, for political or other reason, it shouldn't have happened. And the administration itself should have traced it down and corrected it. And they didn't. And that's what is disturbing and remains disturbing. So Kramer makes a good observation. How did this thing get started? Because the military was telling President Clinton and everybody in leadership that this was a terrorist attack, telling them that very night, the night that it happened, they were under no illusions, no mention of any kind of demonstration, no mention of any kind of movie. This was a planned, well-coordinated terrorist attack on the anniversary of 9-11. So how did this story get started that it was a protest and that there was a video involved? Who was behind that and why? And this is Kramer's point. Why? Did people like Leon Panetta and why did others in the military chain of command? I can understand maybe why they didn't say anything because they they respect the chain of command. They don't speak unless they're authorized to speak by those above them. But why did those like Leon Panetta? He's not under that same kind of restriction. He's not in the military. He's a civilian. He's the secretary of defense. And he knew. He knew the first night that it was a terrorist attack. Why did he say nothing? Why is this information only coming out now, uh, well after the fact? And again, it has to do with the election, another indication that President Obama's 2012 election very likely fraudulent. Focal Point AFR Talk will be right back after this break.